Person talk, hmm. them say that my egun, that man do they talk, he do they talk. Say my egun diary, he they hot like pepper. But every day, then they take money in box. Woman picking, they destroy the they hawk. See them talk, say make we no talk. But thank God, say my egun don't come. So my people make you laugh. Like oh yo yo, my egun don't come. Oh yo yo, my people make you shout. Oh yo yo. Day off in mind. Aha! Now you mona don't hear oh. all these bad bad politicians. Then we call themselves politicians. When they thief our money, when no one to make the common man get what he supposed get for this country. On I never hear something. Now go hear one. My ego, you go show on a paper. <laughs> My egun diary political. My egun la wa mo la mo do 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 do. My egun diary diary kawa. Good evening to you. La mo do 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 do. My egun diary. Good afternoon to you. And of course, good morning to you. From wherever you are watching from, this is Mayegun live. Share the broadcast, invite your friends, invite your not so friendly friends. There's a red flag that I think you should know about so that uh, you would never be caught unaware and begin to ask how did we get here maybe i can help you Zelda. Usually, whenever you expose the fraud, the fraudulent dealers that they call uh, leaders in Nigeria, their followers, I'm talking about uh, those who always defend their oppressors, they always call that hate. No. When you expose a crime, when you expose a criminals, when you expose their sponsor, when you expose those who are covering for them, when you know the victims of all their atrocities, speaking about them, hopefully trying to educate the public enough to be wary of them, is not AIDS. When we talk about the Fnumbu Bokuari, Pastor Ruga, you know, and the rest of them like that, it's not hate. We are telling you exactly who they are. But of course, maybe not you, the Lagos Abobaku. Like, 
APC Ebekekbe they came to, to destroy, to steal, and to kill, just as it's described in the holy books. Thieves comes in the night to what? To loot, which is to steal, to destroy, and then to kill. And for seven years, this is what APC Ebekebe represents. And it's not because of any hate. See, if you see people who are the victims of what APC Ebekebe, what they have done or they are still doing in seven years, if they tell you they hate them because of the impact it has had on them, I can't, uh, you know, I can't speak for them. But ordinarily, seeing it as it is, is not hate okay so let's start with this they brought in security you probably have been hearing about some part of northern nigeria some of these 19 states in northern nigeria including in the middle belt which they usually count as northern states yeah majority of their local government areas are no longer in control of Nigerian government or authority anymore. And guess those who know the truth? The state governors. If you go to Niger State, hmm, out of all the local governments that they have, they have over 800 communities, towns, villages that have cut across more than 18 local government areas. According to the governor, these areas have been in control of uh, the terrorists, different kinds, for the past two years. I mean, they, are, they have gotten to a stage whereby people in those communities, they don't even expect any SOS call center to government anymore. Politicians, you know, all these uh, security agents, they've abandoned those areas and they know them in this state. I'll give you some of those states. And that is Nigeria that you are living in, the one that you are waking up every day, praying, hoping that it's going to get better and the rest of that, right? But there is a twist now with the new information that is available. In fact, there are the terrorists are controlling most part of northern Nigeria northwest northeast in fact with the level of the damages and destructions brought upon nigeria division and corruption that brought i mean brought upon nigeria by this apc normally if you have an election if you ever have anyone right they stand no chance they know that but you see this insecurity as it is hmm? and as it were before they use the same insecurity to come to power the same insecurity that they are now pointing out to tell us that, well, we, are, we have lost ground, we have lost control, seems to be a blessing in disguise for this Al-Qaeda People's Congress. And I'll tell you more. For months, if not for years now, yeah, when these terrorists were taking over territories, they were taking over territories, Nigerian government was spending most of their time resources in mean reports on these activities recorded. In some cases, these terrorists, after chasing away uh, the uh, you know the people, the inhabitants of those communities, right, and they take over the communities, they then appoint Hemia over those communities. So as we speak today, yeah, this red flag has now spread even further than you can imagine. Just in July, there's a secret memo which came to public this month, August. This memo is coming from these Northwest states in Nigeria. These are the uh, states that never had any form or any 
act of uh, terrorism in the incident in their state until APC Ebekebe came. Fulani terrorists ravaged all these states. Many of those communities, right, after killing and killing and killing the occupants, right, they now have heads, emirs, but Nigeria military police or DSS or whatever view, they dare not go there. Now we know why, and I'll tell you. Kaduna State Governor, you know that uh, since 2015, APC, Egbekebe, when they came to, when they came, uh, I mean, came to power in Kaduna, when Hel Rufaya of Kaduna came to power, he went on a pilgrimage. That pilgrimage was to all over Africa and meeting with uh, escaping, absconding Fulani terrorists, which the locals, especially in Kaduna and Northwest states, right, revolved the attack before APC Ebekebe came in. Her Rufaya traveled all over, all over Africa with Kaduna's money, with their own share of that, uh, you know, of that national money, Abi. And he told the terrorists, he confessed, he said, I went to them and told them, listen, you can all come back now. Your brother is in power. If you lost cow during our local squabbles, what do they call local squabbles? The ethnic supremacy battle that has been there for ages, right? Before APC, Ebekebe came in, the Aousas, they have been able to hold their ground. They lost political ground, but they didn't lose their economic ground, right? The economic power of the Aousa indigenous people in northern Nigeria is mostly trading and agriculture, right? They are those who, you know, they live there. They cultivate the land. They grow their own food. Fulanis, they don't stay in a place. They are called uh, a nomad in nature, which means they move from one place to another, right? So over time, when this supremacy battle between them, which were never made public like until now, right? Between them, whenever they happened, the locals in northern Nigeria, all other ethnic nationalities in northern Nigeria, they have been able to rebuff these harmed terrorists in the past until APC, Egbekebe came in, until Erufaya went on a, on a pilgrimage in 2015. And from 2016, Kasala busted. Now, in 2022, Hel Rufaya of Kaduna wrote a letter. In fact, a very lengthy one. To who? To Bokuari, the man that they said will end Boko Haram terrorism in three months. Remember, seven years down the line, over 40,000 uh, innocent uh, people, including women and children, slaughtered by this bloody terrorists that are being pampered in Nigeria. Heru Fire of Kaduna wrote a letter. In that letter, he raised an alarm. He said, Kaduna has been taken over, especially Southern Kaduna. You have been hearing about Southern Kaduna, at least, even if Nigeria media have not really been reporting this, truthfully, honestly, but sincerely, you as a young person or as an adult, you would never deny uh, reading about this massacre, genocide that suddenly started eh? in Kaduna, southern Kaduna. Yes, it wasn't just that. It was also state-sponsored as well. When they would kill their paramount ruler, Adara of Adara Kingdom, in southern Kaduna, he was invited by the state governor. Who was the state governor? Who is the state governor? Heru Fire of Kaduna. Now, he was invited for security meeting because of... Uh, the crisis in Southern Kaduna. Then, young people in Southern Kaduna, they were able, right, to group themselves, eh, to go back for a repressor, in fact, to defend themselves with the coordination and the coerciveness of a Nigerian system. Under the APC, Ebekebe, they disarmed them. They arrested those they could arrest. Nigerian military killed those they could kill. And eventually, they ran many of the youth of Southern Kaduna outside out of southern kaduna for the terrorists to have the freeway free will yes the people of southern kaduna used to defend themselves seriously kajuru and all those places until they invited adara the paramount ruler that they suspected was the brain behind this youth and the people of southern kaduna standing up to fight and defend themselves against this uh, invading terrorist 
what did the government of Southern, I mean, government of Kaduna, what did they do? They invited Adara to a security meeting that is never going to take place. Delayed him for over seven hours. He never saw the governor. He never saw anybody from the governor team. Then he was told the meeting was cancelled. It will be rescheduled. On his way back to his kingdom, he was kidnapped. Very, very close to his kingdom. Right there in the same Kaduna. And guess what? For four days or five days, eh? the, his kidnappers, Fulani terrorists, they tortured him. They raped his wife. Tortured him and tortured him until they killed him. When they killed him, a paramount law, they jump, dumped his body just on the footpaths close to the to his kingdom where people could see him right naked all this a psychological war waged on the locals the indigenous people of northern nigeria you can take them from state to state right from plateau to kaduna from kaduna to kasina from kasina to ninja ninja to zamfara the den of the nigerian terrorist uh, Headquarters, so to say. So what happened? El Rufaya now wrote a letter informing, informing Bokuari that something needed to be done. The terrorists have taken over Southern Kaduna. In fact, the people of these areas have submitted themselves to the authorities of these terrorists. Now, you may be watching me right now and feel like, uh, uh, well, you know, it is not a thing. Somehow, somehow, I would understand why you feel like that. But come on. It is like saying, United States of America have some uh, foreign invaders that have now taken over many, many districts in many, many states in America and what the American government could do was to tell Americans to disarm and give their lands, right? And at this point, the security agents, the government, everyone abandoned them. Now put that into a context and tell me if you can still boldly say you actually have a country, if that logic, if that context, doesn't scare you about Nigeria. Now, the governors, the Kaduna governor, who wrote that, that uh, something should be done, they also put that in the media. Then, all these Northwest states have also submitted their own memo. And in their memo, right, they were asking Bokuari, say it's a cable, call it memo or cable security memo the governors said that uh, maybe bokwari should come and establish military bases hmm? in uh, areas like uh, Briningwari, rejana kachia and marabajos in kaduna and then uh, another one in uh, kotangora and guada in uh, niger states those areas, right, strategic areas, are uh, where they believe all the surrounding communities, local government areas, they have been taken over by these terrorists. But no states where they used to be, northeast. Eh? Out of all the local government areas in Borono State today, hmm, they only have just about seven functional local government areas. The rest are completely taken over by terrorists. But he won't tell you because, yeah, once you know, you realize that uh, there is actually no real one Nigeria. They are scamming you. They are lying to you. And you will soon find out, especially now that they are about to use the same calamity they brought upon you for their own political, electoral escape if they ever conduct the election. Because like, like I said, the governors themselves, they said they want uh, areas that, look at, listen to this, they said they need the operations to prevent Boko Haram terrorists from attacking the Shiroro R2 transmission. You remember I told you when the terrorists took over 
Shiruro Dam, Shiruro Transmission Station, right? Your national grid has been collapsing. Epile I mean, epilepsy like Warakpa. Meanwhile, they haven't told you that for the past uh, one year, terrorists, Boko Haram terrorists in Niger State, they have taken over one of the two transmission stations in Niger State, Shiruru. And as the governor stated in their memo, it has been inaccessible. And they are not really far from the R2 transmission station as well, which means it's just a matter of time. Now, the terrorists didn't go and take over the power station like that. What they did is that uh, Shiroro area and all the communities around there, including, you know, Shiroro local government, I think it's a local government area as well, right? All the like hundreds of local government areas in those places, they are now being controlled by terrorists. So if Nigeria want to go there, if they want to access those uh, power stations, they have to negotiate with the terrorists on the time of passage, clearance and all of that in Nigeria, seven years of APC. I know some of uh, this, uh, you know, Lagos, Sabobakus, they don't have any shame, but I'm, I'm still coming to you. We'll get to your part very soon. Now, this is the uh, report card of APC, right? But they said, if nothing is done uh, anytime soon, right, with what they know, there will be no election in Northwest states. So what are the Northwest states? The Northwest states are Jigawa, I don't know if they will begin to sound, they will begin to make sense to you now when I when I move you to the political permutation that will keep the insecurity in these places, yeah, higher and higher, worse and worse as you move closer to your charade election. And I will tell you why tonight. Like I've been, I've been saying many times, you actually don't need. So believe me, whatever they told you or whatever they are telling you, believe them. But you know one thing about Nigeria, it has a way of breaking your heart. You have just been made to get used to heartbreak and disappointment by making excuses for why they happen. But again, yeah, you will get to that part. The Northwest states are Jigawa, Kaduna. Kano, Kasina, Kebi, Shokoto, Zamfara. Do they sound anyhow familiar to you? Whenever you are thinking about the three Kardashians, where terrorism is high in northern Nigeria, where children cannot go to school, where Unemployment is at the highest and the worst, where poverty is also at the highest and the worst. But whenever it is an election time, there will be no mistakes in their ballot. Something that many, many of you have been made to believe is actually all right and okay. Now, all these areas, pay attention again. Jigawa, Kaduno, Kano, Kasina, Kebi, Shokoto, and Zamfara. The insecurity in these places, which never was, if you remember, in 2015, yeah, Borono was the only state where Boko Haram terrorists headquartered. Abuja was the place they said they were going to take over for the caliphate. Remember? Prior to their 2015 elections, it took the Nigeria military about uh, 28 days to take back 14 local government areas that were saturated or under the control 
of Boko Haram terrorists. Do you remember that? Well, it's never going to, I mean, the Nigeria military just said, with the level of uh, terrorism in Nigeria, it is going to take more than 20 years eh, to end terrorism, more than 20 years to return Nigeria back to 2015. Yes, the military just said that. However, in the next uh, couple of weeks and months, it has now been uncovered. Exactly, yeah. If 14, 14 local government areas could make the Nigeria INEC under PDP to postpone an election before they could conduct one, then tell me what is it going to take them or an excuse that will take them to tell you that there is not going to be an election when they have over 300 local government areas all over Nigeria that are currently at war of uh, either Boko Haram or Fulani terrorist invasion that has led to more refugee camps, people being uh, forced out of their homes, out of their communities, never to return again. And here is the political part of it, that uh, as many of you actually know, they said when any problem lasts longer, or any kind of uh, restiveness or wahala or crisis, so to say, lasted longer than 48 hours. Ladies and gentlemen, if you pay attention very well, the government is involved. So in this case, APC, Egbe Kegbe, have publicly admitted that they have destroyed Nigeria. But according to them, they also succeeded in... Uh, helping Nigeria on some areas. Therefore, if everyone says they have failed, and at this point, if they should lose the grip of power, then they have a lot to lose because apart from them ruining and destroying Nigeria, there are characters in APC, Egbe Kegbe, who have also committed human rights uh, crimes, I'm talking about uh, international war crimes, which will make them turn refugee, I mean, you know, fugitives, they will say, fugitives all over the world. So keeping power and whatever it's going to cost at this point with what they have done, I mean, what other worst things could come that people would not take? Therefore, we have now been told that the memo to bring more security to these uh, Northwest states Today, as you are watching this broadcast, yeah, I said something about Borono. That was uh, 2015, yeah, and that was just a single state. Now, you have uh, more than uh, 34 states in Nigeria. In fact, the entire 36 states in Nigeria, including the Federal Capital Territory, are now feeling the grip of terrorists at every, I mean, in their backyard as we speak. So, but let's just put it this way. Northwest is boiling. Shokoto is the headquarters of uh, the ISWAP, okay? That is where you have the ISWAP 1, ISWAP 2. And then you see those Niger State Zamfara. Those are the districts of uh, Turuji, the Fulani terrorist that specializes in uh, mass killings of people who resist its order. I mean, they are capturing lands. The government of Nigeria, the governors of Northern Nigeria, they are making it easier for these terrorists to capture lands and areas. And these terrorists are collecting taxes in these areas. So yeah, you have them uh, up north. Now we have been told that uh, since the constitution, the 1999 fraudulent constitution says and empowered the uh, president of uh, Nigeria in the time of crisis, yeah, to use 
uh, what they called martial law. So I have told you this many times, and these are based on uh, event happenings that we have recorded and kept on, you know, on the loop all the time about uh, what these guys are doing in order to know what they are up to. So put it this way, the government of Nigeria, on different occasions, okay, we have eyewitnesses, Nigerian soldiers, many of them who have come out to say, on several locations, they have been given wrong information, uh, you know, to be misled by the powers that be, their own commanders. Rather than go after terrorists, they are diverted to somewhere else. And in some cases, they are diverted to areas where they will be ambushed. Uh, I mean, they will be wondering, how did they know we are coming if this was an intel, solid intel? So many, many times we have known that there have been collaborators, there have been sympathizers with these terrorists in different separatists of government, in different military formation, in all these uh, uh, people who are supposed to keep uh, people uh, safe. But what we didn't know at the time was that uh, the reasons why the politicians would not indeed actually sack and arrest, uh, you know, uh, the corrupt uh, service chiefs is because they are doing the biddings of the politicians. You know what? The politicians, the, uh, your governors and all of them, they have access to these terrorists. This is where it, it will make sense to you now, okay? Apart from the fact that uh, to know that the terrorists have free hand, they know where they are, and then uh, the government won't go after them, Rather, they will negotiate with them. They'll give them everything they wanted uh, because they are always going to be useful. They used them in 2014, 2015. It worked. So if they have to keep the power, they have to keep the terror. And if they have to keep the power this time around, they just have to increase the terror. So they know them. They interact with them. They communicate with them. The only thing they won't do to the terrorists is to actually you know, go after them you know, uh, 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 hold them responsible for their crimes. Because even if they eventually caught them or catch them, you know what happened? They free them because for a time like this. Now, this is what we have been told. Just a few days ago, the deputy governor of Zamfara, that is uh, Matawale's deputy, came out glowingly, right, you know, you know, be, be, be mean with smiles and a bit of, uh, you know, a lot of satisfaction all over his face. He was so happy to announce to the people of Zamfara, traumatized people of Zamfara. I'm talking about uh, the homeless people of Zamfara, the children who have now become uh, orphans, women who are now widows, men who are now widowers. I'm talking about uh, able-bodied men and women who are now disabled because of the atrocities and the activities of this armed, pampered terrorist. The deputy governor came out to announce that, listen, this uh, notorious uh, terrorist called Turuji Belu is now on our side. You won't believe it. Just two nights ago, he had uh, his own uh, terrorist group, had a clash with another terrorist group, and Turuji group won. They killed all these uh, other terrorists that they ran away. So Turuji is on our side. Can you believe that? Of course you should. APC, Egbe Kegbe, will not conduct election. The North, uh, you have uh, six geopolitical zones in Nigeria. Northeast, Northwest, North Central, Southeast, Southwest, and then uh, South South, which is the Niger Delta. Today, Northeast, Boronuanko, right, are under the strong harm rule of state terrorists, Boko Haram. If you turn to the center, north central, they are also eh, under the grip of the Fulani terrorists and ISWAP. If you turn a little bit left to the northwest, Niger, Jigawa, and all these places, yeah, they have there are those who have raised the alarm that there may be no election in their own areas. As you are watching this video. Just last year, eh, Malamu raised a memo. It was a security memo. Malamu said, with all the security reports that they have, 
the entire northern Nigeria can choose not to hold an election. And guess what? They will be right. Bokuari will be right. Now, here is the twist to North, I mean, sorry, Southeast, a state sponsored terrorism is going on there where the politicians who are also who are also in the know of what they stand to gain in the midst of this chaos. Yeah. Then you have the Niger Delta, where the owners of Nigeria current oil that has become a free stealing a commodity by the APC, the owners of the oil are called vandals. And if they are not vandals, then they are on the side of the government protecting the pipelines that is uh, extracting crude oil from their land and then pumping it straight away to the desert uh, country called the Nigeria Republic while their own children, women, uh, you know, are living in that squalor because of one Nigeria. The crisis there is brewing. I don't know how many of you who have seen this, but I'm going to come back here to that northern part. You heard that they gave a shit, I mean, they gave a Tumpolo, the contract that uh, it will be earning four billionaires every month by protecting the pipelines that run through all the Niger Delta Creek, where that may be a problem in itself. And you are headed for an election. It is so deliberate. When the place start boiling, it is adding to the, it is part of ticking the box. Which areas are we able to conduct election now? There will barely find one region peaceful enough to conduct the election. But I'm still coming back. See these guys, though? They are angry with the billions of Naira that is about to cause war in Niger Delta. No thanks to APC. Egbe, Egbe. you following? The time where late President Eradua bring peace for this region, in no say carry everybody along. The people when no agree accept amnesty, self ain't talk to them. Then the peace can come, oil can they flow well. Now they say make we protect that oil, make the oil flow well. They can't say now one man then go give, make a come guide my community. In getting community, I get around community. In be man, me I be man. They no consult me, then say me person can't guide my community where pipeline pass. Shell don't do me, Chevron don't do me. Nah, now nah my own is German, now one can't do me. It no go happen. It no go happen no. Because if they no say all of us now men for this creek where we did, then go call all of us, discuss with us. Now nah, you won't come in another way. Colonial master home pass, multinational home pass. You won't come carry my fellow a German and take and slave me. You know go happen. The pipeline, where will they talk? He plenty pass for my place, pass the place where they give person to come guide. Now me, they go come talk to, before they go talk to the other man, we get lesser. But if they say equity no good, then person when say equity no good, and he won't come to equity with dirty hand, he go see war. But do you believe in peace in the Niger Delta? We don't give peace for Niger Delta before, and we're ready to give peace. But if peace, say now the peace where they go come shit me, now graveyard peace, me, I don't want them. Now that's just uh, to let you know that they are already putting money in the air, too. Okay? But what we've now figured out is this. Again, you can never say never. You know what they are doing? As it is now, yeah, the, one of the things that they raised, the governors, by the way, is this issue of a Muslim-Muslim ticket, which is strategic. According to their own inside source, hmm, APC, in seven years, they have destroyed anything called goodwill that anybody could push out there normally like cleanly like you know so at this point what would happen is that uh, if the election is going to hold at all you see many of those who are currently doing obedient obedient with you mm? many many of them they are hibernating right there with you because one of the things they said which you know very well 
is the fact that uh, whatever money cannot buy in Nigeria, more money will buy it. So therefore, you will only rig where you are popular. So APC, in their mind, you know what? Keep the crisis in Eastern Nigeria, right? And if possible, right? Uh, even if they allow all of you to probably vote anyway, it won't even amount to this, uh, your three Kardashian states from Northern Nigeria, the one that is in reserve. But this time around, it's going to be a different game, right? So they don't have anything to do with the East. They don't have anything to do with the South, uh, Niger Delta and all that. So the plot is stick to the Southwest, where even if you rig there, it will be justified and said where well, you are from there. Now, when you go back up north, right? You see those northwest states, yeah? We need to increase the insecurity there. Because if there's going to be any uprising for the level of uh, insecurity in Nigeria against the PC, they should be coming mostly from that part. Any revolt against them. The only way to keep it up is to increase the fear and keep the voter apathy, and enough that, uh, I mean, if they have to postpone it, yes, they will postpone it to another date, which would then make them to gauge all this, your reactions, all this, your rage, APC must go, APC this or that. So when you are done with all your expression, then they can go back to this uh, odd spot and write uh, their result as usual. Something you've never seen before eh, is about to come to your home screen and i don't think many many of you are prepared here is one as it is ordinarily let's be honest okay let us be honest even if they have a millions of people that that are ignorantly or selfishly rooting for apc after all of this yeah trust me if a genuine election is conducted where people are allowed to actually one man one vote as they say yeah they stand no chance like for real but it is not so practically as you never have an election more reason why i have told people if you want to invest anything eh, in nigeria charade if you want to invest your emotion your time your resources your everything please do not invest it in uh, anything that says they want to save Nigeria. You are going to come back drained, eh? completely dejected, drained, shattered, and full of uh, disappointment. And that's why I said I wouldn't invest such. That is why I'm not in any way going to encourage anybody to be part of this charade. But I have no control on what you do or what you don't do, but maybe I can a little bit help or help you in understanding the choices that they are making you make. Now, here is one. If uh, the insecurity in Nigeria, which was the reasons why many, many of you bought the idea of change in 2015, it has come or down on you now that uh, rather than uh, at least come out of uh, insecurity, you have been dipped further in that uh, insecurity, as uh, we can see. But put it uh, put it uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in another context this way, yeah. Those who choose APC and will die for them. And those who uh, who were in the wait, or let me say in the wait, or let me say probably waiting in the in the in the in the, in the corner or by the corner, uh, for a bit of a compensation when people don't pay PC, they can come for that, which is uh, the PDP uh, over time. If there is no obedience, if there is no revolution now, right? Ordinarily, the people who claim to be standing up for Nigeria whatsoever, you would have found them in different camp of these oppressors 
to start with. But there is more. What is more? Now we know that uh, it is not about, uh, well, maybe not now. Many of us have known that uh, it is not always about uh, Nigeria. It is always about the interest of those who want to control Nigeria. It doesn't matter the effect of whatever happens uh, to you. The, uh, the people who are like uh, urging them on. But like I said before, whatever money cannot do, more money will do it. But there is more to it as well, which I've now figured out that it's, money is for those who are going to deliver the job. Those who are going to lead the, the shippies to deliver your oppressors to you as uh, you get closer to your 2023 charade, it's not always about that money. It is about uh, their own uh, stake in what is to come out or what will come out of this when everything, uh, because, you know, when everything uh, goes down. Now, usually people thought that uh, Atif Ku's uh, money was enough to build the base for those who were probably never going to, I'm talking about the northerners who have been under this uh, terrible situation more, and, I mean, security situation, that uh, they will eventually probably settle for another northerner, an Atifku, uh, and then a southerner, uh, Wiki, who decided to probably outspend, but eventually got uh, outplayed. So the whole thing now is now coming down to the interests of your oppressors, which in a way is not the interest of many, many of you. Now let's let's take a little bit, a little step back now. Because the security situation that should hurt APC, yeah, in this case, is about to be turned to work for them and they are ready to give what the Scottish would call for call, which is do whatever you want to do. We know what, the, what we are going to do is worse, is wrong, but we're going to do it anyway. And guess what? We are not going to be stopped. So three days ago, when we were all laughing, you know, laughing at a uh, shit man, the one that said he's a shitty man or, or shitty man. So um, shitty man and his uh, jacket, they are called the attention of uh, the Gen Z that, uh, you know, kind of uh, escalated it and we're all giggling here and there about why we were doing that and call in uh, the report was being hidden away from the public. His team, they were in London. His team were in London meeting with uh, Hungry Wiriwike. You know that uh, Wiriwike, who personally eh, met with uh, these northern uh, guys and in his own mind, as a southerner, right, these people were sincere in keeping Nigeria united, rotating power enough, at least with the damages done by the by Bokuari, it would be ideal at this point, right, to let a power rotation that tore PT, I mean, that turned the PTP, uh, PDP apart to at least heal the, the country. But that wasn't the plan. They played Wiki. When he realized that they played him, after collecting over 500 billion naira from him, yeah, he ran mad. This time around, he decided uh, to also sink the ship. Now, here is the point, oh. When you have uh, the obedience, who have Obi as their leader? When you see obedient, Obi is their leader, okay? Obi in his own mind knows that when those who came and used him as their leader, they are those who are running away from the, uh, from the atrocities, the destruction, the poverty, corruption, terrorism brought about by the hold guards. If you see many, many people who are following Obi, they will tell you they are running away from the old guards, those who destroyed Nigeria, the old people who stole their future, the old people who have more, you know, that stuff, right? They are running away from PDP. They are running away from APC. But as they are running away from me, from them, yeah, they are the Obi and his team, yeah, they are running back to them, eulogizing them, befriending them. But surprisingly, yeah, the obedient are comfortable with that. To them, it's no big deal. 
Obi is a very humble man. He's a very respectful man. Obi met with uh, Babangida, the man that announced the June 12th uh, election. The man that is famous eh, for his own dictatorship. He met with him. He called him national leader. What did Obi then? What did they do? Wow, Obi is, you know, he has to consult. When Obi needs to consult with people, he has to consult with the destroyers of Nigeria. When Obi needs to, to mingle, I mean, to see, uh, you know, the elders, the elder statesmen, they are what? They are the destroyers of Nigeria. But again, listen, I'm not saying you shouldn't take a piece at this point, okay? I'm just trying to let you know that uh, when you see red flags, when it is convenient for you, you don't see it as a red flag, as a typical Nigerian. I understand you, okay? You want the best for Nigeria. You are investing your emotion. You are investing your time. You are investing everything. And there's nothing wrong in that. Only that hmm, you won't be the first to feel like the way you are feeling right now. And you are not likely going to be the last. You are also not going to be the first who is going to come back here in six months' time full of regrets as much as uh, you probably won't like me tell you that. But here are the red flags. The destroyer, starting with uh, Wirewike. Wirewike was dis is despised by the obedient. You know why? To push Obi out of PDP, the person who started it was no other person than Werewike. Werewike felt like in Nigeria, it is hypocrisy to say, you know, they give shishi and then you will win election. Now to him, oh, that's to Werewike, that's hypocrisy. And at this point, where the reality is that if you, had, if you have not kept billions, mostly stolen, you cannot defeat the political cabas, the political establishment, the establishment, which is the PDP and APC and, their, and the products, their products, who happen to be, in most cases, if you figure it out, some of them are your uncles, they are your aunties, they are product of APC, PDP. They are beneficiary of the rotten system. They are part of the establishment. You are never going to say you're not going to give shishi. To wiki, you won't say you won't give shishi and you will defeat that. So he started the campaign to decimate the OBC influence in PDP. As an obedient that you are, eh, originally, this angered many of them. In fact, when, when we wiki ridiculed Obi in Anambra, that didn't go down well with uh, the obedience. Fast forward to when Obi now joined Labour Party. At this point, yeah, where the wiki don't receive his own breakfast. Obedience celebrated it. Yes, yes, they have served him the breakfast. Now, where the wiki is now a wounded, a wounded dog that is ready to even bite his own owner. Now, to the obedient, it is a welcome development. In fact, some of them, they are dreaming that they are very sure Wirewike is going to work for Obi. Okay. Because they want him to. I'm very sure Babangida is uh, obedient. He's already obedient. He's going to work for Obi. They are so happy. So, so happy that Obasanjo is obedient okay that obasanjo is contributor to what you are currently suffering in nigeria today doesn't really matter forget about that one do you understand but here is the red flag why we were laughing at shetima the shitty man in london where a wiki was meeting with uh, the people of kolu what were they discussing? I mean, where we get is PDP. Sheyima Kinde is PDP. Uh, the one from Benue is PDP. Every one of them like that, they are PDP, including Dona Duke. But guess what? They have been in London now 
for over one week. Why? Werewike is now the beautiful bride. Atif could they look for Ram? Obi they look for Ram. Uh, Kolu they look for Ram. So we can now do London. So they said, come. No, we we'll do trade by butter. We, we are not going to touch your base. Because according to Werewike, apart from Tambua serving him breakfast, collecting all of his money, and then uh, disgracing him at a PDP convention. He pay nam, he pay nam, he pay nam. I can tell you this free of charge, and you know it. To make the matter worse, they now teased with a wiki that they have spoken to Atifku. Atifku will make him deputy or vice president only for that one, for that ticket to also cut. So at that point, where the wiki became the uh, the bull inside the china shop, ready to root anything. And Atifku and gang, who are typical northern politicians, they also had their plans on how to decimate Wiki himself. First move they made, they went around him. They decided to pick some of the East loyalists, took them to Abuja, or make them offer, listen, you, if you work with us, PDP, we can take over PDP. And this guy is going to, is not going to be governor again in under uh, 10 months or so. Work with us. We can hear about that. He raised the alarm. He said, I saw this person go win election. He go, we will go see him. After that, Tifnumbu and gang, deal makers. You know, if you want to dine with the devil, you must have a long spoon. Tifnumbu and gang, they dined with the devil in the north. And this time around, they dine with the short spoon. Somehow, somehow, they have now inherited a dying, uh, calamitous, uh, you know, deadly party. Now, whatever it's going to take to give it a life, including talking to Wiriwike, is a welcome development. So, let's go back to London. In London, they met with Wiriwike, who let you keep your territory. Listen. We may let you just uh, keep the status you have without challenging or, uh, or rigging anything there. We know PDP are going to come for you, but we can give you a safety net. You don't need to decamp. We just want one or two South, I mean, South, uh, South states, Niger Delta states. If you give us rivers, yeah? And then uh, we have Ayade in Cross River. Listen, we don't need to win there. We just need you. What do you want? Wike is yet to respond before Atifku team left NBA conference in Lagos. They did, I mean, that same evening to Paris. They said that uh, Sheyuma Kindi and the rest of them should come down to France. That was, that was supposed to be uh, two days ago or thereabout, Abby. Yeah, two days ago. So the Atifku team, they have been in France since then. But guess what? Peter Obi, after the NBA meeting and his own team, they were invited, they have been invited to America to come and talk about how Peter Obi is going to fix Nigeria, how he's going to restructure, but I'm still coming to that part as well. But surprisingly, mm -hmm. the Sheyima Kende and Co, they were supposed to travel down to France and see Atifku. They are still in London with the uh, pictures that appeared today. What was that? Obi, Obasanjo, and this crew, they are, they are meeting in London as well. Now, listen to me, all this you have heard, though. But what are the political meaning of all of this? I'll give you a hint. I mean, I'll give you a hint. Presently, many people believe that Obi is a distraction. In fact, in the camp of Ekolu, eh, they personally believe that Peter Obio and the rest of every one of them that you are seeing right now, by December, yeah, I'm not me, a demo, and you, some of you have told them to dream on, okay? But here is the point that uh, eventually, when they say their own uh, jungle will mature, eh, you will see PDP governors that are already 
signing up for call. I told you, if you think it's going to be about the emotion and the rest of that, you should begin to wait for it all. Now, by that December, their plan is, you see so many of uh, those who are key people that some of you are giving attention to in your obedient as it is right now movement, yeah? You begin to see them begin to explain to you the areas that uh, are obvious will never give you Nigeria as obedient are dreaming it. The following are the areas. You see, in northern Nigeria, eh, by December, you will begin to know how that ticket is going to go. You know it already. Some of you are already, you have obedient in northern Nigeria. Let me tell you one instance, a quick one. For APC, Egbe Kegbe, to the market Obi, they have to call him IPOB in northern Nigeria. You see, you in southern Nigeria. Now you de shalaye. Are you with me? Now na de shalaye. They explain and all of that. You see, in northern Nigeria, yeah, as we speak, you have those who are obedient, Abi. And if you look at their track record, they are as recent as uh, three, four months ago. They are rooting for APC. Defending all the atrocities of APC. Some of them are with PDP. And they are rooting for PDP. And when it comes to North versus South, if you go back to their track records, many, many of them have taken positions to let you know Northern Nigeria is meant to rule over you, the Southerner. You see this mentality these days. When you look at the OB movement and all of you who are doing it with your hearts, mostly from southern Nigeria, this mentality of the north is born to rule you. Many of you are feeling